All right, Varlamore the Rising Darkness title screen. Before we jump into taking on Varlamore Part 2, I want to sell off the current spoils that we can sell and see where that brings us to for our loot tab. Not too bad. Nice 5.7 mil to add to the cash deck. Brings us up to 42.8. Pretty decent standings for supplies whenever I need. And as much as I want to get started on the quests, I think the first thing to do should be figuring out how to actually get to the new island as well as the new mountain areas. Looks like I should be able to just walk right across to it. But let's grab our bird friend. Oh, Renu! Nice, so they give us a free pretzel teleport over to Alderin, as well as up to Katsakali Gorge. And from what it looks like, we only have one new location to have to unlock. Just from coming up to the gorge location, we already get a new music track. I'm thinking I might actually want to start off the Varlamore Part 2. I guess this is going to attempt to be a completion episode? We'll see how it goes. But for now, to begin, I have already handily saved myself 261 marks of grace, so that way I can still keep a placeholder for my other outfits. But we can go get another graceful set, and then go hit up the Colossal Worm Agility Course and get our new Varlamore Graceful outfit. Here we go, Grace. One of everything on its way to the inventory. Make our way over to the newly revamped Colossal Worm Remains that now have an agility shortcut. Apparently, there's a construction worker, and Worm Tongue is the actual course NPC, being an anteater. So we're gonna need 650 termites for the graceful outfit, only 40 termites for the teleport, and 900 for the acorn. So we're looking at 1,590 termites overall. Best way to get started is just by running. Let's go ahead and start our laps. Okay, so it's pretty automatic to run through the first section here. I believe the tightrope is for the normal, and the ladder is for the advanced. Oh, I thought I was about to fall off. Does it just do that every time that we cross that section of the rope? So there's like one, two long sections that you don't really have to click for. Otherwise... We find something to watch while we just make our way through the course. Hey, we found our first termites, and it comes with some bone shards. Let's go ahead and get a lap of the basic agility lap. Oh, again, thought I was about to fall off, so I think that is just a part of the tightrope section on this side. Oh, that's actually kind of cool. On one you walk across, and the other one you use it for your hands, and you just sprint across these gaps? Whoa, that's awesome. I'm guessing climb up the ladder and just come down like the other one. I think the basic one's actually kind of more cool with how you cross across that section. Alright, let's get some personal bests. Lap 2 of the advanced route gives us 1 minute exact. Lap 2 of basic and we get 55.2. Ah, 3 was a little slower so you know what, never mind. We're just going to go to advanced and get this grind over with. Well, we are now 39 laps down at the Worm Agility course, up to 162 of the termites. It's just as repetitive as other rooftops, so I think we're gonna go ahead and start tackling the quests. For Varlamore Part 2, I've only heard of the Heart of Darkness as well as Death on the Isle. So meet and greet and ethically acquired antiquities, I can only guess are our smaller quests, so we'll just start with those two. We'll keep it simple with just some cash, some food, and just some accenting melee gear. I guess we'll do the new quests bottom to top, so let's go ahead and start with Ethically Inquired Antiquities. We get to begin it in the city of Fortis, so let's make our way there. We can begin by investigating the empty display. Talk to the curator next. I need to investigate the museum for clues. I don't know what we're looking for, so maybe just talk to the tourist? Or a civilian, maybe? Okay, neither one of those did anything. How about the academic? Anything upstairs? Wait, excuse me, what is this? Armor of the Cloud Titan? That is awesome. Don't know what I'm supposed to be looking for. Is it this? Some tools left on the ground that were used for no good. Okay, what do I do with that? Talk to the curator again? Well, that did nothing. 
What about the display case again? Hasn't seen anything weird? What about a citizen? But the tourist did see somebody skulking around. They went out the front door and went to the right toward the big birds. All right, let's go there. To the pretzel pets. Don't tell me Regulus is evil now. Well, somebody came by with a case and asked if he could have a go at the bird. Uh, he was told no and made his way to the east. Sounds like somebody's trying to get to the mainland. Let's talk to the trader member. Have you seen a man with a case come by? Don't you dare start another one small favor chain. I need to fix their sales. A crafting store just down the road that can help fix them up. I'm gonna assume just down the road actually means south. Ah, uh, we were right, we were right. Oh no, it is true, as long as you can do me a favor. Eh, <sighs> fine, what are we doing now? I thought this was hopefully gonna be short, but, uh, maybe not. I just need to pass on that she says thanks for the last shipment. Okay, thank god. I'm getting tired of these teases of the longer quest series, though, Jagex. Stop messing with us. The sails are repaired, now I get to go back to the ship, and will he tell me what about this mysterious person with a case, please? A great herd fellow that asked to have a go with the boat. He asked to be taken back to Port Serum. I guess we head to Port Serum. Don't know who we're supposed to be talking to, if anybody. So I'm not gonna waste too much time hanging around with the bots over here. And instead, we're gonna go ahead and just look up the next person I'm supposed to talk to in this quest. It's gonna be Betty. She's popular, cause she was used in Wild Guthic Sleep a minute ago. Wait, is it not her? I just misread. I'm supposed to talk to Trader Stan first. There we go, that makes more sense. Wandered up north and something about some runes. Now we go talk to Betty. So I've got to decipher some notes that she took about what kind of runes he was looking for? One law, three air, one fire for high elk, for telegrab, and for teleports. So it's in Varrock. And he's wearing a monocle? Yeah, it's Hag Helen. Let's go get him. We're here for the thing that you took that I don't even remember what it was at this point. Yeah, Zerna's Diadem. Well, you can't help me with that, but luckily you're the NPC in here we can pickpocket. And I'll just go ahead and take a key, assuming it opens the only locked door in here. Well, there's a book that belongs to the Arceus Library, and find Zerna's Diadem. Apparently it's a crown. Hmm... I wonder, I wonder what Mr. Hag Helen has to say about this, eh? I found the hat you stole. What? That's a little close. Stealing is stealing no matter how you try to justify it. You need to share it rather than keep them in the storeroom. Yeah, there we go, and we'll finish it off with Think of the Children. Just give it back already. Okay, how many of these dialogues do I- Oh, there's a shame meter at the top of the screen, I'm just now noticing. Okay, uh, oh, it's so close, 97. Just one more, come on. Yeah, there you go. You're hoarding, but you should be sharing. I know this one already works. There we go. 100%. We're done. Likely story. You were looking at another display, somebody else stole it, and you, uh, saved the day by rescuing the crown, I guess it is? It had to be protected and nowhere better than Varrock. Oh, just stop. And now we just get to head back to Fortis and finish up the quest. Talk to the curator again, and that is going to be quest complete. Short, simple, not bad at all. Now on to meet and greet. Well, I guess not. We came to the Colossal Worm instead. It's been a couple of weeks and we've barely played. I've been kind of busy. Just to make sure that we don't lose our graceful, we'll go ahead and drop what we currently have. I don't want to mistakenly die my white one, we want to die the plain one that we have, so let's go ahead and buy one graceful recolor. Beautiful. Nice six more slots, I won't go ahead and show you every single log pop up, but there's number two for the top. It looks pretty good, if I do say so myself. Runecraft cape actually looks pretty good with it as well, so I think we'll stick with this one for now. Grab all of our old outfit, and we'll go ahead and get a worm teleport so that way we can come back here easily. Logs hiding behind the menu, but that just leaves us with the calcified acorn to get with about 300 more termites. But for now, I wanted to see how hard it would be to take on the Hoikotal boss using only red dragon hide, top and legs, and a dragon mace. 
some prayer potions in the inventory, divine combat to help out, as well as some food. Let's see if we can beat a solo instance in this setup. I know the bare basics of how this fight works, but I guess we need to talk to Tala first. Here we go. Seems like he's basically like Scurrious, just uh, does more damage if you don't pay attention. Nope. Alright, now we're getting kind of in the rhythm of the fight. But it is chip damage, which is annoying. If it took that long for the first part of these five tunnels, this is gonna take a hot minute. That's fine, we could be patient. Oh, it does jump in front of other ones. Okay. That idea did not work. Now there's five minutes down, I already have to renew my Divine Potion. There we go, nine minutes to finally finish off the body parts, and on to the main fight. Let's just, uh, see what happens. So far it seems like it's the same as the body part fights. Just pray correctly for the type of attack that's coming towards you and avoid the spots on the floor. Yep, he's even easier than Scurrious. Just pray correctly to the right color and avoid the shadows on the floor. He just takes a while to kill. Ah! We can finally attack the tail, we made it to half health. Yeah, it really is true. Just, uh, click it and you avoid the shockwave. That's the same thing. Still pray correctly and avoid the circles on the floor. Oh, and it changes sides. And hits a 25 if you land on it. Okay. So maybe there's some safe spots. Like if we kind of just stay away from it, does it hit us? Ah, okay, cool. So we can just avoid it when the slam comes out and then run over to attack it. This makes the kill even slower, but it is safer. Helps prolong the food. Let's try skipping. Okay, yeah, that worked. And that one didn't. And I wasn't paying attention to the ground. Okay, yep, this is going swimmingly. Uh, I've only got one food left. I need to be safe rather than fast. As I take a 15 running onto the circle. Perfect. And turning off the prayer too early. Ah, oh, so good to finish off. I don't think we're gonna get the kill, guys. But we've learned that uh, more food, less prayer should be fine. And paying attention and not taking those unnecessary hits. Yeah, I don't think we'll live through the chip damage, let alone my own mistakes. But we are halfway through the Hoikotal's health and halfway through its tail health. So I think it's officially a little over halfway, because we do have that initial five things to attack. So let's bring some more food, maybe only one line of prayer potions. Try this again. Well, our first kill went well. We did get our KC achievement completed, only doing that minimal gear kill once because that was about 40 minutes and I'm only doing it for the guide. Not too interested in multiple times. We did come back to the Colossal Worm Agility course for hopefully our last set of termites over here. Nice, just two more than we needed. Let's take the slide for the final time. Talk to Worm Tongue here and get our calcified acorn. One more collection log for the Worm Agility course. And we can leave now that it is nice and green logged. Currently at 282 collection logs, 118 combat tasks, and we still need to do the three quests that came out with Varlamore Part 2 I haven't done yet. I should probably get on that. Well, it looks like we've taken long enough that the quests are now on Quest Helper. We can actually use this plugin again. We're still gonna do them backwards though, so let's start with meet and greet. Uh, wasn't expecting to fight a Minotaur during this. Let's see if we can learn this real fast. Uh, pray melee? Looks good. When you hear Moo, switch to Mage, and then back to Melee. Alright, so this is actually easier than expected. Not bad. That's gonna be meet and greet complete, finally. 
What a good murder mystery quest. That whole ending that took place in the theater. Mwah. Chef's kiss. Let's see if this different looking landing site can be built with the normal materials. The answer is yes, I just needed one more soft clay. Okay. There we go. All of the currently available Quetzal transportation spots are available for us. On to our last quest. Let's get this green back again. Alright, our final quest for this update is done. Heart of Darkness complete. I guess time to farm ourselves some tapioca pudding and see if we can't get that pendant of eights coming out of the Moxliotl. It's not the worst boss if it's anything like the quest version. I'm so curious if we can activate the statues before we have the talisman or pendant or whatever it is. The answer is yes! Awesome! Number two done. Another one added in over here above Cam Torum. Nice! And the final one is a little special down in Alderaan. We had to pickpocket Constantinus to be able to get the key. Now to head into the cellar. Open up this fancy chest down here in the far corner around all the wine bottles. And finally search the fountain outside just to the south of the front. Get a nice little blue looking icon. And now we can run to the north of the POH. And that'll let us activate our fourth and final statue for when we get our pendant ready. Beautiful. Oh, and it gave a water rune. Alright. On to farming the Amoxliotl. There's our kill count number one. Curious what the totally shattered combat achievement is. And we get a frozen tear added to the collection log. Apparently it was without any of the unstable ice shattering. I don't think we're going to get the speed challenges, so I think we'll look at doing 10 kills without leaving and getting the 20 KC. And then we'll knock out No Prayer, followed by hopefully getting a perfect at some point for Nagawa Negation. And if we get the Tamatli drop, we can knock that one out too. So for right now, just focus on 10 kills without leaving and do one of them without using prayer. I mean, it's a magic-based boss. How much damage could it really do without, huh? Apparently the answer to that is quite a bit. Jeez, I'm eating more than I'm doing anything else. Oh, come on, just kill it. Oh, come on, just kill it. Please. We're so close. One more. Come on, one more. Okay. Oh, there it is. What I didn't use. Oh, I did use prayer to be able to use piety for a little bit. Okay, well, let's go ahead and uh, restock the inventory here. Bring nothing but food. Drain our prayer so we don't accidentally turn it on again. And let's just try to get this done in take number two. Oh, we're so close, come on. Yes! Oh, there it is. Without Ralos' light, we don't have to do that again. Thank you! Now we can try to do the 10kc without leaving. There's just no way that the absolute next kill is the completely perfect kill count. Alright. Well, that makes this a little easier going into the future runs. Nine more until we have the 10 in a row.
And that's 10 in a row. Not too bad. And that gives us the pendant inert. Beautiful. We got everything we wanted kind of at the same time. Look at that. Ah, oh, let's get out of here. Double check myself to make sure we're not crazy. Just the speed runs that are left as well as 20 KC and using the tamales that we don't have. And if we use these frozen tears on the pendant, it gives it the charges. And if I rub it, it should, yep, pops up a nice, easy to digest menu showing you where to go. Not bad at all. I guess let's see how long it takes us to find those tamales. There's our 20 KC down. Thank you for the rune plate, buddy. All right, a moxie kill 100. And we still don't get the glacial tamales. Not necessarily going for the pet, just want the other drop. We'll do our pet hunting later. Alright, we got him! It's only 111, so we got a nice number to grab him on, but let's get out of here. Look at our new ice hammers. And let's see, out of curiosity, if these are going to be faster than the 2 minute average kill we're currently getting. I know the double hits will be better for the Hoi Kotal, but will they be better for a Moxliadl? Let's face her again for the last time before we come pet hunting. Well, we got the Tamatli Triumph done, and it looks like it's about the same as the Fang and the Dragon Dagger. So we'll mostly keep these for the Hoikotal fights. Oh yeah, these are so much better for the double hits at Hoikotal. And that should be the tail down. Twice as fast as it was with only a single hit weapon. Oh, those are good to have for this fight. Not much else I can think of though. Alright, let's kill number two done. More cannonballs. Actually not terrible to get 250,000 GP. Without drops, my Huey kills are about 500-700k an hour. Well, that's gonna round off episode 9 of the maxing series. No levels gained because we are up in the upper 80s, lower 90s. But Colossal Worm Agility and a Moxliadl minus the pet have both been completed. Good little bonus over to our collection log and our combat tasks. We are just before League's 5 Raging Echoes releases, so that means we're probably going to save the Curse of Arav to be completed after we come back from the League, and we'll go back to more completing and leveling. So until episode 10, I'll see you guys in the League, and have a good rest of the day everybody.